that quick literally takes no time from you going from a beautiful specimen to a specimen that is now severely dehydrated I mean these root balls are they're just so dry so dry so what we'll do is we'll get these inside and soak these up while we work with the other plants that we're going to be using wait my little leg too short so we'll have to do it the old-fashioned way Here's the root ball, if I can get there. You see how dry this root ball is? It is bone dry. So these are going to have to soak up moisture overnight in order to get the design that we're going for. I mean, we can plant the container up without the impatience being 100% fully hydrated but i mean i want instant gratification so we'll just let these soak in out of the two ferns that i have here they're both kimberly ferns i'm looking for which one will go best paired in these containers so i want the larger of the two to go in this container and I'm thinking it's going to be this one right here. This is going to be the larger of the two. So definitely this is going to give me the look that I'm looking for right here. And this one right here, it's a good size, but it's not as big. We're going to split this one in half. on this fern is perfect 
With this pair of containers, we're gonna be using the same components in each container. Now, I love a beautiful pair of containers. A standalone container is also gorgeous. Also, a trio is fine. And then if you have four containers, five, six, whatever grouping you choose to use, it's beautiful. But oftentimes, we'll see where there's this component of plant, that component of plant, and it's just like a grouping, but we're gonna be using the same components when it comes to plants. We are gonna be using obelisks to go in this container. One of the containers is larger than the other container, but we're going to make a statement with our obelisks here. Now, let me give you an example. We're gonna take this fern, we're gonna set this down here to the side. And then we'll take this fern out right here. But this is the fern. We're gonna use one full fern inside of this bigger container here. And we're only gonna use a half of the fern in the other one. Now, I have an obelisk. We got one that's bigger. And then we also have one that's smaller, but that's so cliche. We're going to be using same size obelisk inside of both containers here. The statement is definitely going to be made because you have a rather large obelisk that you're using in the same container, right? We want to make a statement here. That, that's what the goal is to make a statement. So for example, if I take this obelisk and I put it inside of this small container here, it is absolutely gorgeous. One may say that it's overscaled and then others might like really like the vibe. But for me, I like to go with a kick and a punch. Sometimes you just have to get outside of thinking about the traditional way of doing things. Just follow along with me here. So we're gonna use this obelisk here and we're gonna plant up these beautiful containers. Now, we did have some plants that were soaking. I feel like quite some time has passed and so they should be in pretty good shape. If they're not all the way full, then they should be close to being full because we have so much that we need to get done today. Now, what I wanna do before we start doing that, I am gonna move away this bigger obelisk here as well as this smaller one because we're not gonna use them. And to be quite honest, we could get away with using the bigger and the smaller one for the design that we're gonna be using. But baby, when you see these plants that we're going to be using, you will understand quickly. Now, <laughs> I did move this back over. I'm not really worried about the obelisk toppling over because the amount of plants that's gonna be in here, they're going to quickly become the frog that's going to be used inside of this arrangement. So therefore, the plant roots will, and the plant itself will actually anchor the obelisk in place, and then it also has spikes down on the inside of it. We will be using more soil here. That's also something else that I wanna to touch on. With my soils, I don't use one brand. If I go to a garden center, if I go to a big box stores and they have soil on sale, then guess what? I'm gonna buy as many bags as my coinage, my allotment for soil will allow me to get at that time because I know I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna feed the soil. If I feel like the soil is too thick and it's causing a drainage issue, I know how to go in. You can add perlite, you can add sand. There's so many different things that you can do. But as you start to get comfortable with container gardening and figuring out what your plants need, then you'll know how to proceed from there. I understood the assignment. Here are the impatience. They're well hydrated now. They're all poofed back up. So what we have here, we have the Sun Patience Compact Electric Orange. 
Now these, they say they're easy to grow and they are. You can do these in sun or shade. They require only two to eight hours of light a day. They grow 14 to 32. They have a mounding habit and they want you to space them 14 to 24. Although our leaves are tattered and some of our blooms, they're not looking the freshest. It's very easy to go in and just kind of just pick these out really, really quick. Very easy to do that. And as far as when the leaves look like this from being dried out like this right here, I just go in and I just prick these off. So it takes nothing but a second to go ahead and just pick all of these out. Very simple. Takes no time to do it. Sometimes I'll go ahead and plant it up and then I'll go ahead and I'll pick everything out. If you do have impatience that are struggling, they rebound very easily. You can see our newer growth down at the bottom, like right here. Let me get in there. You can see where we have that. And so just go in. I What I do is I'll just go in. I'll take all of these unwanted leaves off here and then I'll have a pretty good specimen. Now this is one of the ones that were severely dehydrated. As far as this specimen right here, this one is not too bad. It's still compact. It looks pretty good. You can see that the flowers also, some of the flowers also still look good here. If I seen this specimen at the garden center, let me step back here. It would not stop me from not buying a specimen. Now you see, I do have this a pretty electric orange. It's gorgeous. I love it. It's vibrant and almost looks like a red. Let me show you what we're going to pair them with. Let's go ahead and scoop this back right here. And we'll move this back. So we'll have some room to get some plants on the table. Here is the star of the show. Look at this gorgeous bloom right here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Just gorgeous. This is a mandevilla. Even when the blooms are closed, they add an architectural feature. And you can still see on the tips, you can see that beautiful orange color. Now, if we get a bloom in close, look at that. Now tell me that right there is not perfection when it comes to matching. Now this is a bloom that's open. This is one that's newer. It has that soft pink. You can see that coral color in there. That very, very pale pink. Let me find another bloom that has the pale pink. Also, the back of the petal actually is gorgeous as well. So depending on what angle you're going to be looking at the arrangement from, you're going to be able to see all of the colors that I'm incorporating here. We're also going to be using in this arrangement, Kimberly Fern. And I can't wait till you see how we put all of these together. I did find this Kimberly Fern on sale. It was marked off for half price. So excellent beauty. And I'm going to stretch this even further than one could imagine. We're going to take some wire cutters and we are going to clip this out. Got it. Now we are going to snip the rubber bands here. And we just want the mandevilla to fall. Right here, we're gonna snip this out. Pull all of these out. And I save these too. So there we go. We want the collapse of the mandevilla. So now we can put our obelisk in there and start to train it the way we want it to be. We'll scoop forward a bit.
and just go ahead and wrap all the way up to the end. Like, okay, I'm wrapping this. And I'm gonna just wrap all the way up to the top here. Okay, so there we go. Same thing right here. I'm gonna wrap. Oh, broke that one, it's okay. Okay, so, okay, one more. Bring this one and just again, just wrap. We have this wrapped. Now our obelisk is not in there sturdy just yet, but what we're gonna do, we're gonna pivot a bit, right? Now we already have some ferns, some Kimberly ferns that are already split in half, right? So versus going in using the full fern, we're going to go ahead and split this in half here. We're gonna come in with half of the fern, Make sure when you're using your fern to tuck the roots. So I have roots here. Make sure you pull these roots down into the soil here. We're gonna tuck this down right here in the bottom, okay? Now, gorgeous. All right, now pull some of your ferns through the obelisk here. Pull just some of them through. And the impatient, tuck that in right there. See that? Okay, so now we're going to backfill with soil. Ooh, it's heavy. All right. Alrighty. Tucked in so you can see that it's starting to become more sturdy. And I am, however, going to feed the mandevilla up you can use clips until you get it to where it's just climbing up on its own and of course i'll clean up the impatient now, We'll take, we'll pack in more soil. And we'll pack that right here on this side right here. And again, we'll pull some ferns through on this side. Okay, so that's our first container. I love it. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. 
with your mandevilla. Don't just pop it in like this because it's the correct way to plant it up. We have our obelisk in, we have our mandevilla in, and our first impatient. Actually, we're going to take this impatient out. We're just going to pop it out. Because what I want to do is I want to set this container first. So let's just work through everything, and then we'll talk about what we did that's different from this container to this container. container is finished and it is totally given what I wanted it to give here let me get the piece of cardboard from this container right here and put it on this back one so I can turn it around without scratching up my table here All right, now let's turn it. The back, I could have come in and I could have placed in another impatient around here, not the look that I'm going for because I'm going to train this mandevilla to have some spikes that's kind of down. And you'll just see On the side, we have the Kimberly Fern, we have the Impatient, and then again on this side, we have the Kimberly Fern. Now you can tie these to kind of help it climb. To help it climb up. Get some clips 
or some foam or you can even really use string so let's do it here let's go get some string we're just going to take some string here take our mandevilla and then we'll tie in And it doesn't have to be tight. Then we'll take this piece. Now I could go here, but I'm going to go here. With this piece right here, I'm going to tie in lower versus higher. So I'm going to go right here. Okay, just like that. So again, I'm going to take my mandevilla and I thought, oh, just broke this one. Okay, but this one, I could pull it closer. Let me turn it around here. So I can take, pull in my woody part up to the obelisk and just tie it in. Okay, now I'll go up to the top. Just like that, okay? Right here, snip that off. The back container, remember we use two impatiens, two Kimberly Ferns, and we kind of use like a every other one type situation. And then we did the Mandevilla on the inside, so it's centered. Now here's our back container. You see we have a beautiful motif here. We have, I mean, it's just, the container itself, I love it. And this pattern is exactly the same that's on this container as the one that is in the back. The one in the back here, we took the Mandevilla and we bumped it up to the back of the container here. It's in the back. And we use the same components. The container is exactly the same. It's just smaller here. You can see where we have a repeat, the obelisk, we use the same size obelisk in both one, but there's quite a bit difference when you look at the height of each container. This one, of course, is bigger, so it's gonna be taller. This one is smaller here in the back. Baby, I was gonna try to get these in a place. I was gonna try. Mission down because you know what this is heavy and I know the container is already heavy by itself So I got all this soil in here and it's going to be odd to move it because of the obelisk on the inside of there So I'm gonna be able to do the like I normally do with my legs So my son he should be coming home soon He's out playing a basketball game with his buddies, you know, this is a time of year where you know, our young folks are getting ready to go to college. One's going to the military. One of his friends have already left. He actually left at the beginning of the summer. Just super happy. Shout out to the parents because it is just a wonderful thing to see your kids just start their path and start to go on their pathway in life. Shout out to Zach, Ken, and Monte. I'm so proud of you all. I'm so proud. Just keep up the good work. And for the ones that's going to the service, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your service. Because as a military family ourselves, like when you have someone go to the service, like you give so much as a family.